Hi everyone, Jared here. Time for the market video update. Um, we are currently looking at, I'm, I'm starting a little bit early today because these markets are just kind of flat, which means probably get a little bit of movement coming into this Asian session and hopefully a lot of bit of movement coming into the uh, UK session tonight. We do have a live session tomorrow morning for the non-farm payroll report and we're going to see how things go there. Uh, that, as always, is likely to be very, very crazy, so be ready for that. So far, the Dow is just basically flat today. It's down a little bit. S&P is up a little bit. Oil has actually turned out to be a, one of the bigger losers, and that's that's been interesting. Really bumped up against that $100 mark for quite a while, and it started to turn south. Um, gold, though, is not losing. So you can see that we, we've definitely got some commodities that are on uh, that, that, that are kind of on disagreeing uh, uh, directions and, and timetables here, and so that's kind of interesting. Uh, we had a little bit of news out today. Uh, Bernanke spoke, and that wasn't very positive. Uh, kind of pushed some of the dollar pairs higher uh, towards dollar weakness. Um, and and so that's kind of as expected every time the, the Fed has anything to do with it. Uh, tomorrow morning, we've got employment numbers for Canada, as well as employment numbers for the U.S., as well as ISM numbers uh, for the U.S. So it's going to be a wild morning. We're going to be on at 4 a.m. as always uh, on Friday morning. We're going to see where these markets go, but it's definitely likely to be very, very wild and crazy. Um, we're still looking at this 82. Remember this 82 mark, 8200 here on the uh, dollar index and the and the the pair has just kind of worked its way up and it's been bouncing off this. Here we are still above 79 and we've been here for a day or two or three. Uh, actually, we're on the daily charts. So we've been here for for about a week now, just bouncing on this 79, between 79, uh, 100, and about 79, kind of 30, 40, 50, and not really going anywhere. So again, we're still wondering, is this retracement or is this something bigger? Um, as far as trend reversal, so we're kind of keeping our eye on that. The euro dollar, in my opinion, is basically just a uh, wait and see. There, there's not much we can trade here on this euro dollar. It's starting to consolidate. It's consolidating below our 38% fib uh, and right at this really strong resistance. Um, so, a as predicted, uh, I'm expecting kind of a stopping point here. But whether this is going to be a big turning point or not is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, probably not going to see a lot happen before NFP. When, when we have the employment numbers, I think that's probably going to get this euro dollar out of the channel, uh, as well as a lot of the other dollar pairs uh, get them out of the channel. But until that happens, I think we're just going to be stuck in this channel. And so until we can get back below about 3075 or back above about 132.50, there's not too much we can do in here besides maybe try to play the range, but I don't even recommend doing that. Uh, I'd wait for the, the numbers, wait for the big news, and see if we can get this thing going in one direction or another. Pound dollar, on the other hand, is looking a little tiny bit more interesting. The pound dollar has got a pretty good trend in the works. That is for sure. There's a good trend here. Uh, it's coming up to some of these highs back here. We had this little blip up, uh, and, and it's coming into kind of some slightly exhausted areas here. It just broke slightly above that 61.8, and it's been trying to work its way back down. I'm not looking for any kind of big reversal on this pound dollar. In fact, I don't think it's going to give us any big reversal, but I do think if we can get back below this 158.00, uh, which is just sitting on it's right about 157.99 right now. If we can get back below this level, you can see that's a very clear area right there. Um, I think we've probably got a short run into the trend line and potentially into the one hour gap, which the trend line may only give us 20 to 25 pips, but the gap could potentially give us as much as 50 to 60 pips. So I think that's going to be one thing to look for. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to buy this thing just yet, but uh, likewise, if, if it doesn't break this if it continues to uh, through the Asian session consolidate at and above this level. This could be a nice little buying opportunity to uh, to take it back up as well. So as long as it stays above 15800, and 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 by this I mean really 157. 95 is probably our breaking point on this one, so we're going to give it a couple of pips. If it doesn't break below this, then we might have a short-term bounce to take it up for 20 to 30 pips uh, with stops just below 157.95 or, or even 157.90 uh, to take it up. Otherwise, if it does break this, uh, look for a break, a little tiny retracement. Just try to get in as close to this 157.95 or, or even 158.00 level uh, if it does break below and, and see if you can ride it down into this area here. But if, as long as it's stays above that, I think we've got a chance to at least get it back up in some of this consolidation, which is about the 158.50-ish area, and I think that's kind of a reasonable target for there, but but pretty minimal movement on this one as well. Uh, Euro yen has been kind of all over the map, but it's still pretty choppy. It's been in a channel for several days as well. Uh, it broke out of our trend line, and then it came back into the trend line, and it's just all over the place. So 
euro yen, uh, be very careful in the yen pairs because as I mentioned in the chat, there are lots of rumors that possible uh, Japanese intervention is in the works. And so uh, be very careful on, on selling these guys because if that intervention does happen, and it would happen you know, during an afternoon, if that does happen, then these pairs are all going to shoot up 200 or 300 pips uh, just no matter what. Now, they'll probably all come back down within a day or two or three, but, but they're definitely going to work their way up there. So be very careful with that and just kind of watch out on those, on those yen pairs, on those sell opportunities. And as far as anything else goes, I don't think this, this euro yen is any more tradable than the euro dollar. So that's going to be something to be careful of. We've uh, had an interesting morning. We tried a little bit of a, a buy opportunity on this pound yen, and it ran up a bit and gave about a 15 pip run or so, and it's right back down to the lows, and it's just still channeling as well. Everything is just channeling, channeling, channeling. Um, and so there, there were some breaks, there were some movements, but the markets just kind of keep doing what they're doing, and it's making it kind of tough to trade some of these conditions. And this is not super uncommon for uh, you know a non-farm payroll week and so on, but lots of news going on, lots of things happening and it's just a whole bunch of wait and see on so many of these pairs. Pound yen, just like the euro yen, just like the euro dollar, uh, is just in a channel here. It's about an 120, 130 pip channel uh, several days now. I'm just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing around. Uh, the, the pound yen looks like it's trying to kind of fall off the ledge here and make a little bit of a run down into some of the lower parts of the channel, but definitely has not been able to do it yet. Um, and again, be very careful selling these yen pairs. I think that's... Uh, decently high risk coming into any Asian session just because we might see some of that intervention happening. So be very careful there. Aussie dollar has given us some pips a couple of times, actually. Um, we took a trade on this yesterday uh, on, on the Aussie dollar at the break of, uh, of a little short-term trend line, wrote it down for about 30 pips. It went back up and tested that, and this was posted in the notes again, another trade to run, bound, run down 40, 50 pips, and it's come up and hit it again, and another possibility to take it right on back. Um, but for the moment the Aussie dollar the Aussie dollar looks like it's going to break it just it seems like it's going to be able to make that break uh, there's gold is 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 holding pretty strong uh, there's definitely some lots of reasons not to be buying the US dollar uh, so I think the Aussie is going to have a good chance to get through these levels so be really careful look for possible opportunities remember with non-farm coming up we've got to be pretty careful here but look for some possible opportunities here to buy on the dip and get some of this uh, uh, entry action down here about 106.80 uh, 80, 85, right around there, and try to take it up into these highs. It's definitely channeling, but if I had to take a bet on which one I think is the better entry at the moment, um, definitely it's it's not bad buying, uh, selling off some of these tops, and I think it's very nice to sell off some of these lows right here as well. You can see that the market keeps testing that, and then it bounces and runs. So still look for some little uh, entry opportunities around 106, 80, 85, with stops just below that area. Um, because if it does break, I think we're headed into this one hour gap, which could be, you know, another 50 or so pips away below that level. We don't need to let it go that far. We just need to make sure that it can stay above that and try to ride it up into those highs. So that's what that Aussie dollar is going to be good for. But we're going to be able to take a cue from gold because gold uh, consolidated very nicely, made a little bit of a break up right here. But still, all gold did was... Um, just run into some of these more specific highs right here. We have a 1761, 62, and gold made a high of about 17. Uh, uh, I think we got up to about 1760, just just shy of 1761. So gold's kind of running, and and uh, if gold continues to make some highs, then that Aussie will probably finally be able to push through uh, 10750, which it has not been able to do yet. And keep an eye on the dollar Swiss franc, uh, because as this thing is starting to bottom out, if this bottom out really works, uh, there's there's chatter about intervention because of the the euro Swiss franc exchange um, getting too low and, and the Swiss National Bank may jump in here and intervene on their own currency as well. So be very careful about trying to sell the dollar Swiss franc or any any Swiss franc pairs and, and look for uh, trading towards Swiss franc weakness because there's a very, very good chance we could get that could get that intervention and, and we're just about 50 pips off of these lows right here uh, for a long-term trade. It's going to be wild with news coming up and so on, but for a long-term trade, you're probably at a safer bet uh, looking to buy off some of these lows and taking them back into the highs on this Swiss franc. So good setups. Uh, we'll continue to have notes posted and we'll have a live session for the news tomorrow and we'll just see what we can get out of this Asian session, but mark these charts and be ready for a little bit of waiting. These markets are still a little bit channeled. We've got to get some trend and some direction and a little bit of clarity of what to look for and expect next before we can really make some big decisions. So we're still kind of being patient with that. But there's good setups and there's some good short-term opportunities. So look for those. Best of luck and we'll see you in the chat.